Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an abusive stepfather gets his just desserts. If you're a fan of my channel, then you know the world is filled with terrible people who will screw you over at a moment's notice and not feel the least bit bad about it. That's why you need to protect yourself and your data with ExpressVPN. In my opinion, ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market and adds an extra layer of protection that prevents others from collecting data about what you're doing on the internet. But okay, let's suppose you don't care about your data. Well, do you care about being able to watch the content you want to see? Because a lot of content on the internet is blocked based on your location. Websites, YouTube videos, even entire Netflix shows and movies are blocked based on your location. Once you're behind a VPN, Netflix will unlock all of its content to you. That's how I use it. I'm a pro YouTuber, so I want to be able to watch any YouTube video I want without being geo-locked. And best of all, you can get ExpressVPN for free for three months by going to expressvpn.com slash r slash. That's the symbol slash followed by the word r slash. Plus, by clicking the link, you're actually supporting my channel. So if you don't think three free months of ExpressVPN is a good deal, then you're kind of a choosing beggar. Let me first give you some background so you get where people are coming from. My father left a few years ago. Mom bought a small house from the money from the divorce, and a few months ago, she got herself a boyfriend. At first, I was truly happy she had moved on, but soon I realized she's fallen for a real piece of garbage. Now, you need to understand, my father was an alcoholic and a narcissist, so my mom's normal meter was truly broken. Anybody treating her halfway decent must have appeared like Prince Charming to her. So please don't judge her too harshly for her choices. I don't. Now, he was not only halfway decent, he really treated her well, though he was an a-hole to me. Brought her flowers, went out to eat regularly, etc. But what I realized and she didn't was that he was a parasite. He had maybe a hundred bucks to his name, and his only income was support from the state, a couple of hundred bucks. Now, I already hear you ask, how did he afford flowers and going out? Well, by living rent-free and having all of his costs paid for till he gets back on his feet. One last thing, he soon started to show an immense entitlement towards me. Basically, he said this is his house, so I have to follow his rules. Of course, I told him this is my mom's house, not his. And I don't have to do anything unless mom tells me to. He took that really badly, since he has an ego problem, as you probably already guessed. I tried to tell my mom, but she wouldn't believe me since he always acted very nice to me when she was around. But as soon as she wasn't, the Cold War started. He pulled a lot of small stunts, like demanding in a patronizing voice I bring him beer while watching TV with me, while mom was on the toilet. When she came back, he told her that he had asked me nicely to bring him a beer when I stood up to get something, but I refused, insulted him, and sat back down. So, of course, she told me to apologize and get him beer. I tried to explain, but she wouldn't let me. So he kept pulling petty BS to establish dominance. After this whole story, I asked my mom why she would always believe him and not let me explain. Apparently, he had told her I was super jealous he was in the house and wanted to get rid of him by trying to make him look bad. So she backed him to show me he's not going anywhere. Time for the main act. I had gone out Friday night and came back at 3 a.m. My mom was gone over the weekend and he effing exploded. How dare I disrespect him like that coming home this late? I told him, calmly, he doesn't get to declare a curfew for me and my mom allows me to come home this late. Which is true, provided I stayed at the house of three specific people I'm friends with whose parents are friends with my mom. He flipped out even more and called me a dirty liar. He then gave the classic line, as long as you put your legs under my table. And me being a smartass of course answered, this is my mom's house and my house, you're a guest here. He screamed at me he's going to kick me out of the house and I'll not be allowed back till my mom returns. I screamed back he can't do that since this is not his house. I threatened to call my mom. He, emboldened by her backing him up all the time, told me to do just that. But I better not lie to her and tell her what's actually happening. I put her on speaker and told her, He's trying to kick me out of the house till you come back on Monday. It was Saturday. She didn't believe me and told me to put him on the line. So he started by telling her I disrespected him as the man of the house by coming home so late and lying to him about her being okay with me staying at my friend's house and that I need to learn to respect him. So it's up to him how he disciplines me since she's not there. Then he lied and said he told me to be home by 1am. 
For the first time, he let his mask slip, and she picked up on it right away. So, let me get this straight. I allow my son to be out till 3, but you think you get to overrule my decision on my son? And now you think you get to kick my son out of his house? He realized he effed up. He tried to get her to take his side, but only dug his hole deeper. Well, he keeps not respecting me in my own house. If you let him win now, he'll never respect me. And you think the right punishment for disrespect is to kick him out for two days? Yes, finally you get it. I knew you'd come around. Well, he did nothing wrong since he's allowed to go out that long. You have no right to overrule my decisions on my son. But... I'm not done. Apparently you think the right punishment for your disrespect is to kick you out until Monday. But I only have a hundred bucks. This isn't fair. Where am I supposed to go? I'm sure my son had even less money and you didn't give a flip. You've got 30 minutes to leave. I'll tell the neighbor to check. If you're still there in half an hour, he will call the police and have you arrested for trespassing. When I come home Monday, we'll talk. I'm such an idiot that I believed you over my son. Once mom came home, I told her how he kept pulling this BS on me, and she was so sorry she kept backing him up. I tried to tell her many times he treated me exactly like my father did when she wasn't around, one major reason for their divorce. But since he treated her so differently and acted so differently from my father, she believed him that I was jealous and tried to get rid of him. But when she heard him say the words my father said so many times, you owe me respect since you live in my house. She suddenly realized I was telling the truth all along while he was a liar. This is why she got so furious so fast. She never realized how badly he really treated me and how entitled he acted, since he had hidden it so well before. But when he started to talk about deserving respect in his own house from me, something my father kept saying, a house he didn't put a penny into but was somehow his. Even worse was thinking he could overrule her on her own son. My father kept overruling her decisions. So she finally saw through him and got all the evidence she needed that I was telling the truth all along. They broke up that Monday. He never even got back into the house. They met for coffee and she demanded her keys back. Originally, she wanted to give him a month, but when she entered the bar they met at, he right away started to scream at her, how dare she kick him out of the house like this, and that now he would never get the respect from me that he's entitled to. So she told him that she's only there to ask for the keys back and that they're through. So basic being a decent human 101. Respect isn't deserved, it's earned. Our next Reddit post is from That's One Hardcore Jakes. My mom and dad met when they were 14. They never really hit it off until they were about 23 to 25. The story starts in 1994. While they were dating, my grandmother was always saying things such as, My daughter deserves the best and has no business with someone who's dirt poor. My dad wasn't poor, but wasn't very wealthy. He always had a job and has multiple degrees under his belt. When I was being conceived, he was working as a security guard and pulling in a decent amount of money to keep himself and my mother happy. My mother would work day shifts at a local grocery store, packing shelves, working the checkouts, etc. Jumping forward a few weeks later, my parents decided to tell my grandmother that they're having a baby, me. They'd already told my dad's family and it was good vibes all around. But once they told my mother's mom, she wasn't very happy. When mom told her, she walked away, went outside for a cigarette, and didn't talk to mom or dad for about 15 minutes. According to dad, mom started bawling her eyes out and locked herself in the bathroom. My grandmother comes back inside and walks up to my father and says, Here's what's gonna happen. She's gonna get an abortion and you're going to disappear. My father was absolutely destroyed that she didn't approve of the pregnancy. So dad left the house and went home without my mother. I don't know what happened when dad left the house. I haven't heard what happened after that. 1995. I'm born. While my mother was in the hospital, my grandmother came up to see me. According to both my parents, she kept calling me her baby. Dad kept his cool in the hospital as he didn't want to cause a scene as there were other patients in the room that my mother was in. But my mother absolutely freaked out. She asked my grandmother to leave and was saying something along the lines of, How dare you? You tried to force me to get an abortion and now you want to say he's your baby? No, F you, etc. From what I gather, my grandmother ends up leaving. A few days later it all blows over and my mother and grandmother are okay. 2004. 
My father is suffering from depression, anxiety, and had lost his job. He searched for about two months to find a job, but no one was returning his calls. He starts freaking out as bills need to be paid and food needs to be put on the table. My father gets a call from my grandmother asking how he's going to get a job. He tells her that he's been for interviews, but no one's called him back yet. My grandmother starts to belittle him on the phone. You're a worthless piece of garbage. My daughter is going to be homeless because of you, and your son will be taken from you. Dad hangs up the phone. A few weeks go by, and still no one wants to hire him. My father starts falling into a deep depression. He starts spending the next few days in bed just crying. I remember coming into the room trying to play with him, and he would just lay there staring into nothingness. A few days go by. I think I'm upstairs playing my PlayStation or playing with something as kids do, and I hear my mother screaming. I run downstairs and my mother screams, OP, help! I finally get to her, and I see her trying to lift my father up around his ankles. I look up at my father, and he had tried to kill himself by hanging. We cut him down and send him to the hospital, and they hold him for 72 hours. A few days go by, and Dad tells Mom that my grandmother had sent a letter to Dad telling him that, This family would be a lot better off if you just disappeared. My mother cut all contact with my grandmother after that, and Dad starts going to therapy. Just to clarify, my dad is still alive and well in 2020. After he started going to therapy, he became a lot more open with his feelings and started to improve mentally. 2015. It's Christmas and we have some family and friends over. We're all having a good time, some family members are having a good laugh while others are very drunk. Either way, it was good vibes all around. Around 5.30pm, my mother's phone rings. It's my grandmother. My mother disappears into her room with her phone and doesn't come out for two hours. Me and dad check on her every half hour to see if she's okay. When the phone call ends about two hours later, she comes out and pulls me aside and tells me what she was talking about. Apparently, my grandmother lied to my mother her entire life about who her real father is. My mom is bawling her eyes out and dad grabs her and they both disappear into the bedroom for a little while. About 30 minutes later, they come out, sit everyone down at the party, and tell them what had happened. Everyone's disgusted in my grandmother, and most of them don't talk to her ever again after that little stunt. November 1st, 2019. It's my father's birthday. My mother bought my father tickets to see his favorite band, Grinspoon. Both are very excited as they haven't seen them play in years. They get ready and go to the concert. While at the concert, my mother complains about a headache. She takes a few painkillers and soldiers on. They watch five of the supporting acts and the headache is getting immensely worse. Grinspoon comes on stage and starts rocking out. They finish their first song and mom says to dad, We need to go home. My head is killing me. Dad throws her in the car and they both drive home. The second they get home, mom is sprinting to the front door, runs into the bathroom and vomits. Dad follows behind her and holds her hair and gets her a glass of water. Mom did have a few drinks at the concert, but she wasn't drunk or even tipsy. After she has a good vomit, she goes and lays down on the couch with dad. Ten minutes goes by and mom's eyes start rolling into the back of her head. We all start to freak out. Next minute later, she's having a seizure. Dad calls 000 and we rush her to the hospital. After a few tests, dad rings me and says, You need to come to the hospital now. I get to the hospital and dad is waiting outside. He holds me and says, OP, you need to say goodbye to your mother. She's had a stroke and the doctors say you need to say goodbye now just in case she doesn't make it. I say my goodbyes to my mother and she heads to surgery. Six hours later we get a phone call. The surgery was a success and she's alive. Me and my father are over the moon. The doctors explain to us that she's lost a lot of her motor functions but will regain most of it with therapy. A few days later, I'm out at work and my dad is going to the hospital to visit mom. My dad goes to walk into her room and guess who's there? My grandmother. Somehow she caught wind of this. I don't know what was said between her and dad while mom was recovering, but I know he said to keep it under wraps as we will tell everyone in the next few days. The next day, dad goes up to the hospital and my grandmother is there again. Only this time, she's brought people that we don't even know. Dad immediately leaves and calls me to ask who they are. I tell him I have no idea. I call my mother's sister, my aunt, and ask what the hell is going on. 
Apparently, they're just my grandmother's friends and, in my personal opinion, had no right to be there as they didn't know my mother at all. Now, I'm not a violent person at all, but while I was on the phone with my auntie, I said to her, Do you really think my grandmother deserves to be in the same room as my mother? She's cut her out for years and now only gives a flip when she almost dies. What about when she needed her support? My auntie said nothing. I reply with, you know, if I was the one that walked in and saw her, she would be very lucky to leave with a full head of hair. I hang up the phone. After that phone call, my auntie must have spoke to my grandmother and she never returned to the hospital. Two days go by. I get a phone call from the one and only Witch of the West. I answer not knowing who it is. Hello, OP speaking. She replies, Hey, OP, it's your grandmother. Remember me? I reply with, yeah, sadly I do. What the F do you want? She starts going off her nut at me, calling me every name under the sun, and saying that now that my mother is immobile, that she's going to try to become her carer, and that she's going to make up a bunch of lies up on how my dad is a drug addict. My dad's never touched an illegal substance in his life. While she's losing her cool, I press the record button on my phone and just let it capture everything. She hangs up and I immediately get a lawyer. I see the lawyer a few days later and we talk it over. Because I'm my mother's son, I legally consign to become her carer. So I do and I give my lawyer the audio recording of the phone call me and my grandmother had. I hand the lawyer the USB with the recording on it and she plugs it into her laptop. She listens to it and is in total shock. We set up a court date to take my grandmother to court. Two months ago, we finally go to court. My grandmother is facing two counts of harassment over a cellular device and one count of defamation of character. She's also not allowed to go near my mother or anyone else in my household until 2023. Overall, I'm satisfied with the verdict. Also, my mother is doing much better since the stroke and is slowly regaining all her motor functions. I couldn't be more proud of her. This absolute hypocrite judged her daughter for having a kid with a man. Meanwhile, she's lying to her daughter's face about who her real dad is. What a garbage human being. Our next Reddit post is from Blue Ellen. Hey, so I got reminded of a lady at my job who seriously tried to get me to passionately hug and have a baby. So I'm asexual, have been that way for years. I've also been diagnosed with unspecified psychosis, depression, and anxiety. The chance of me passionately hugging is slim and the chance of me having kids is even slimmer. My coworkers know about my mental issues. I ended up in a mental hospital for a bit and they wondered where I was. And this one parent was trying desperately for me to passionately hug because she thought it would cure my depression and a baby would cure my psychosis. Why is she entitled? Because she has three kids that she only kept around for a check and blew all her money on drugs. But she apparently has enough knowledge to know how to cure mental illness. She also tried hitting on guys young enough to be her kids. And no matter how many times I told her passionate hugging wouldn't cure me, she never dropped it. She finally got locked up, and after her second time, her kids were taken away. But having kids worked out so well for her, so I should just listen. That was r slash Entitled Parents, and if you like this video, then let me know by hitting the like button because it really helps my channel grow.